Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, we are going to see how to use Apache Kafka as a messaging service with Spring Boot application. Apache Kafka is a distributed publisher subscriber messaging system which can handle high volume of data. It has high reliability and can be scaled easily. It is fault tolerance because the messages are persisted in the disk before sending to consumer to prevent data loss. It has high throughput and it can perform 2 million writes per second. What are the different use cases for Apache Kafka? Kafka can be used as a log aggregator, collect logs from different microservices. It is heavily used by Zipkin, which is a distributed tracing system. It can stream real time data. It can also be used for event sourcing in microservices, where multiple microservices will be writing to the Kafka streams and these streams will be responsible to write to database. Before we go in, we need to understand few things about Apache Kafka. We need to understand what is a Kafka cluster, what is a zookeeper, what is a topic, what is a partition, what is a consumer group, who can be a leader and what is the meaning of follower? A Kafka cluster is a cluster that has n number of Kafka services running in it. That is, these are individual servers. These individual servers are called as brokers. If a cluster has more than one broker, then it is known as Kafka cluster. And you can add a new broker very easily into a Kafka cluster. These brokers can scale individually and easily add a new brokers in it. Zookeeper is used for service registry that registers all these Kafka service brokers and it plays the part of routing the request from producer or consumer to the brokers. All data is actually stored in the Zookeeper and is replicated in the partitions. This way, data is not lost if a cluster goes down. Zookeeper has a record and will replicate immediately. This gives zero downtime for Kafka clusters. What is a partition? A server can be partitioned into n number of uh, you know, uh, memory chunks or chunks and these partitions are linked to topics. Topics are nothing but their message channels. Data is stored in the partition and if the partition is full, you can use in another partition. What is a consumer group? Consumer group gives you an opportunity to group all your consumers together for better handling of throughput coming from the producers. Kafka has a concept of leader and follower node. A leader node is responsible for all read and write operations on the given partition. Each partition has one server acting as a leader. A follower node is someone who just follows the leader's instruction. If a leader fails, one of the followers will act as a leader. When a leader goes down, the follower immediately becomes a consumer, pulls the data and updates into its own data store. Before we move on, please make sure that you have Kafka installed in your local machine. You can install Kafka by going to kafka.apache.org site and you can go to the quick start section. Quick start section is very useful to quick start your installation and you can easily uh, run the zookeeper and the server. So just follow the steps mentioned here, download the code, unzip it, start the zookeeper, start the Kafka server. It is pretty much straightforward. Okay. So what I have here is like I have created a multi-module project which is Spring Boot Kafka. It is going to have a consumer model and a producer. The example that I'm going to show you is I'm going to have producer as a separate Spring Boot application, consumer as a separate Spring Boot application. When producer sends a request to consumer through Kafka, it is going to be two individual applications running in different ports. I have also created a model project because I'm going to send a student object from producer to consumer. I don't want to create a Java file in a producer and again a student Java file in the consumer. I want to have it common for both the projects. Okay, so let us take a look at the form.xml of all the four, uh, four projects. 
first we have the parent form of our spring boot kafka project so i have added the spring boot starter parent uh, uh, dependency i have added the you know web dependencies and the test dependency the modules are listed in the parent form then let us go to the producer form in the producer form the same thing goes in we have the starter web we have the spring kafka added here and we also added a dependency for our model because the producer is going to refer the model project through the jar we are going to have the same setup in the consumer project also in the model project there's not going to be any dependency because it is going to hold only plain old java objects let us go into our producer project and take a look at the configurations there are two ways you can use kafka in spring boot application one is auto configurations and the other is do the configurations yourself which is manual configuration for auto configuration you can use the kafka template directly and send a message you don't have to create a producer factory consumer factory listeners all these things but for ma manual configuration you have to create all these configurations in the configuration file and use it for production applications it is always recommended you use manual co configurations because it will give you an upper hand on different configurations available that you can manage yourself okay so what i have here is like i have a property key which is kafka boot dot server and i'm getting it into a string variable then i have a bean for kafka template uh, then i have a bean for producer factory you need to add a bean of producer factory to enable transactions in kafka so the producer factory will take input as the kafka server it's going to take a, a key serializer a value serializer the thing is like here the key serializer is going to be a string that is going to be your kafka topic the value serializer is going to be a json serializer it's going to be a json object now let us move on and take a look at our controller and our service class the controller has a simple rest controller service which is going to accept a student object as a request body and it is going to send it to the kafka sender let me open up the kafka sender in the Kafka sender, we have auto at the Kafka template and we have received the Kafka topic name from the property file. And then we are building the Kafka headers for the message. And we are using the Kafka template.send to send the student and header. Let us move on and take a look at the consumer. In the consumer configuration file, again, I have a Kafka server details, I have a consumer group ID and a consumer factory and a listener factory. The consumer factory is for the consumer which is to know that which is it is binding to the Kafka server. Uh, you mentioned the Kafka consumer group ID. You mentioned the key deserializer, uh, the topic name uh, and you also mentioned the uh, value serializer for the uh, actual value and you have to return it as a new JSON deserializer student dot class in order to Kafka to understand and convert the JSON object into a student object. Then we have the Kafka listener factory to listen to the messages sent from the producer. Let us move on and take a look at our Kafka receiver. The Kafka receiver does not have a Kafka template. It is just the method is just annotated with at the rate of Kafka listener. With the topic and the group id the the method parameter will be student kafka will automatically take care of deserializing uh, the the message that is sent in the uh, in the channel and give it to you as an object before we move on let us take a look at the application.yaml of the producer and the consumer in the producer we are going to say the server details and we are going to give the topic name and the server port in case of the consumer again it's going to we are going to share the server details here we are going to mention the topic name and we are going to mention the consumer group id before we move on and running the application let us quickly look into the zookeeper.properties and the server.properties these are the two important properties that you should know when using kafka so let me open up the zookeeper properties the zookeeper properties as a key data directory and the client port and maximum client connections okay the data directory is where the actual data is stored can you recall that i mentioned that your data is actually stored in the zookeeper 
because if a server if a cluster goes down it can be easily replicated from the zookeeper so the port is 2181 let us move on and take a look at the server properties in the server properties uh, you have the broker id uh, you you have the port mentioned here and the one uh, one of the important thing is the log okay so we have the log directory where the kafka is going to store the logs for the server okay so this is for one node what if you want multiple brokers it is quite easy so what the only thing that you have to do is you have to create an another server dot properties you can rename this as server uh, hyphen node one dot properties and you can create another file as server hyphen node two dot properties copy everything from here directly change the port change the broker id and change the log path it is currently pointing to temporary directory kafka iphone logs you can rename this as kafka iphone logs iphone node one and in the server in the server iphone node two properties you can mention as kafka iphone logs iphone node two this is how you create multiple brokers in the kafka cluster okay so let us start the zookeeper server and then let us start the kafka server for this what you need to do is okay so the command is sh slash bin slash zookeeper server start dot sh and you have to add in the configuration properties also okay the zookeeper has started now let us start the kafka server for this again sh slash bin All right, the Kafka server is up and running. Let us go on to a code. Let me quickly start the server. We start the producer and the consumer. You can see here that our Spring Boot application has registered to the Apache Kafka server. So you would be getting this only when the registration happens successfully. If the registration doesn't happen, it will throw an error. So the server is up and running. Let's move on to our postman and let's fire a request. I have the request opened up here for the student object and I'll let us try to send this to the Kafka. Okay. I have received data sent to Kafka. The status code is 200. Let us see what happened in the Kafka interface. You could see here we have a log here that my topic iPhone Kafka sender. So it looks like the, uh, the sender has successfully sent the message and broker has received it and has successfully sent to the consumer. Let us now move on to our Spring Boot project and take a look at the console. This is the Kafka consumer console and you can see here the Kafka has received the actual data. The model has been received successfully. In case of the producer, you could see that Kafka has successfully sent to my topic iPhone Kafka sender. Before we wrap up, I want to quickly show you how data is stored in the zookeeper. Let's move on to the temporary directory of zookeeper. This is the log file used by Zookeeper to store all your data that is sent from a sender to a consumer. So this is where it keeps a track of all the data sent so that if a cluster goes down, it will automatically uh, you know, bring up the data 
and create a new cluster so that data is never lost in a Kafka architecture. With this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you would have enjoyed this video and thanks for watching and please subscribe for more such videos.